This is Dune, a game of conquest and diplomacy. This video is sponsored by the EmpireGameStore.co.uk. For exclusive bunker discounts, follow the link in the description below. Hi guys, my name's Tom and I'm from The Bunker. Um, we're a group of friends that play lots of different games, namely tabletop war games, but we wanted to start branching out and sharing our love of some of the board games. And uh, my personal love is the franchise of Dune. And I've always wanted to start playing this game. It's a board game for uh, two to four players. It says it takes one to two hours, but I, I honestly don't believe that. <laughs> um, it's obviously skinned really nicely from the new film, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I thought we would do an unboxing of it as a first video. And then we're going to come back and do some gameplay once we've thoroughly absorbed the rules. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's crack her open. Fear is the mind killer and all that lot. Okay, so it's by Gale Force 9. And we have our rule book, which explains. So there is another, there is another game, a Dune game that they do. Um, which is like a six-player epic play until the last person is defeated game. <laughs> this is a lot sort of more condensed than that, so it plays over five rounds. Obviously, all the characters, as you see from the front, they're obviously from the book, but they are obviously changed for the, the, the film likenesses and all the components, and it's about the control of Arrakis, which really interests me. Lots of different phases, and it's just, yeah, just cool. And I think it's a, it's a different... Thing that I'm sure my, myself and my friends will enjoy playing and you can pick one of four houses House Atreides, House Harkonnen, the Fremen which is pretty cool or the Imperium which is a bit odd um, but we'll, they all play differently and have different various sort of boosts and interestingly if you're playing with two players you just get a special combination of two of the cards so you get Atreides and Fremen and then Harkonnen and the Imperium so that's your rule book and we have the map of June. Just about got it into camera shot. <laughs> so that's Arrakis. Um, obviously, you have Spice Bank, the Talaxu tanks, where your soldiers go once they're dead, uh, to recover. And then it's split into regions, so all of the various different regions there. And essentially, you battle over this over the course of five turns, each with seven different phases. So there's a storm that will go around the table, and as we know, the storms on Arrakis are deadly, so they wipe out things, but the Fremen have ways of avoiding it, and so on and so forth. Spice comes to the surface. There's card systems in it. You revive your troops manoeuvre your troops, battle each other, then collect spice, and at the end of turn five, it's whoever has the strongholds, gains the power of Arrakis, and he who controls the spice controls the universe, as we all know. As well as our map, we have all of the other tokens and whatnot that we must use for the game. So, one thing you think about Gale Force 9, this stuff looks really cool. So I've got different houses so you basically select a house and you play uh, so for example we've got house Harkonnen yeah that's just cool in itself so you've got leaders in reserves so you start you have obviously Baron Vladimir uh, the Beast Raban uh, Pitta de Vries Trooper and then Servant it's obviously different leaders um, leaders in reserve, you have 20 forces that start in your reserve and you start with 15 spice and they have like a traitor mechanic so part of the combat you can say hi your guy's a traitor and I automatically win so we've got the Harkonnens, House of Traitors so you can start with 20 forces in reserve, 13 spice, they have a lot more leaders um, so you've obviously got Duke Leto, Lady Jessica, they're all in there so to speak uh, revival of two forces um, more leaders and other factions, which does make a difference because your leaders can die in battle and there's a, an interesting mechanic with how the fights I care. Um, yeah, so different how The Fremen. Polish comes from the cities, wisdom from the desert. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so the Fremen, they have 15 forces that start in their reserve bank and five forces that start in the polar sink because they live on the planet. They already have forces on the planet, whereas the other houses have to land forces. And they start with six spice, and then they can, when the storm moves, your force in Santa Rosa is not destroyed, so they're not impacted by the storm. Obviously, they've got still guard channel. The Imperium. 
So the Imperium is an interesting faction here. So the Imperium has 20 forces that start in reserve, and they start with 18 spice. Um, they can revive two forces. They have the Reverend Mother, the Sardaukar Captain, a Sardaukar, Herald of Change, so on and so forth. So they can use the voice. You can use the voice during a battle to tell your opponent they must play or must not play one weapon type, specifically a poison weapon, a projectile weapon or a special weapon. That's cool. You can use the voice to interfere with the game, which is exactly what the Imperium do in the Bene Gesserit. So interestingly, that's obviously your four player game. You can play the game two player and it combines the factions together. And if you know anything about June, it makes sense that House Atreides and the Fremen are one combined faction and you can choose seven leaders randomly from the 12 Fremen and 12 Atreides leaders and so on and so forth. And then, as we know, House Harkonnen and the Imperium are a combination and they all have sort of combined abilities, which is pretty cool. So there we go. They, they're the factions that you can play. Lots of them. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And I love this idea. I love this two-player game and the combine them together. No board game is complete without a plethora of card. <laughs> um, yeah. Interestingly, so these are battle wheels. Combined together is how much forces you want to commit to it. The storm. Certain areas get covered up when uh, you're playing two-player. So you've got all that aspect. And spice. <laughs> I believe that's spice. Yeah, it looks spicy, doesn't it? Um, characters, another battle wheel. More and more tokens. So um, these are your forces. So I imagine 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Yeah, you've got 20 forces and that's it. Because you have to ship them from your home world to Arrakis. Yeah, interesting. Well, there you go. Yeah, so you expect it, don't you? Really nice card stock being Gale Force 9. Very much looking forward to punching them out and I'll store them in a box, I think, or something like that. You've got the little connectors to make the battle wheels. A D8 or an eight sided dice for those of you that aren't war gamers with the symbol there on, I imagine, on the eight. Yes! <laughs> That's exactly so. It's got a zero. So, wow, that's uh, that. If if you know anything about me, that 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 summarises my rolling. But you get a lovely dice in there. It looks like it's made of spice and cards. So we have marketplace cards, spice, battle cards, and traitor cards. So the way they work. Oh, I say the way they work. We don't really know yet, do we? So if we look in here. So traitor cards, every leader is there as a traitor variant of them. So you can say, reveal this battle plan. Well, so re reveal when battle plans are revealed if this leader is used by your opponent. You immediately win the battle and lose nothing. Yeah, so it's essentially it's a good way of tipping the scales in your balance because as we know with June it's about political intrigue and bribery and threats and not necessarily just fighting. So your battle cards, the spice as we know must flow. So the spice must always flow. So there's a turn when you do the spice blow which are these cards. So you pull your card and go off. Oh, I've got a sandworm. <laughs> Despite, so the sandworm can come along and it attacks things and so on and so forth. Um, if I were to pull that card out, the two corresponding areas. So I've got the the broken land at the top of my map and Cleaglu North, which is that one. I would put six spice in each of them. And that's essentially how the game tells you where to generate a spice. And if a worm comes along, so if a worm comes along, you discard all spice and forces other than the Fremen in the territories now showing in the spice deck discard pile. Then draw cards, discarding any more sandworm cards until another territory card is revealed. So the sandworm comes along, so you discard these. So that obviously we know with June that the worms are attracted to the spice harvesting. So it's like as the territories are stacked, the worm can come along and, and destroy everything. We have... Battle cards with Jason Momoa looking very stoic. 
So battle cards. Now battle cards are things that you can add to your overall battle. And they're weapons straight out of the book, um, straight out of the film. A lot of them you, you will recognise. Personal shield. So you can play one weapon card. I believe some of them are specialist weapons. You can play a defence card as well. Because when you fight, you put in your leader. So like, for example, if I put in my leader, I could say I'm going to put a defence card into this battle. Um, protect your leader from projectile weapons in this battle. You may keep this card if you win the battle. So basically that's like saying, okay, I'm going to put my Duke in there and he's, he counts as five troops and I'm going to shield him and I'm going to declare that. The opponent might say, oh, poison dart. Play as part of your battle plan. Kills the opponent's leader before battle is resolved and the opponent may protect leader with an extraction fan. You can keep this card if you win this game. So if we put an extraction fan down, then it protects against the poison dart. Which I'm guessing, there you go, an extraction fan. So there's lots of different combinations. One man army. It's just like me. Reinforcements. They're all free. Jab cloak. There you go. Sandware mural. <laughs> so these are options. They're worthless, basically. So some of the worthless cards, they're in your hand, and the only way of getting rid of them is chucking them into a battle. Marketplace cards. He who controls the spice controls the universe and gets to spend the spice, as we all know. Spending spice is, is always good fun. So, weather control. You move the storm. Now, that in itself could be quite brutal. Um, more spice, yes. Protection from the storm. And these these are different different ways of affecting the game. Beautiful card stock again. They just look lovely. So you can tell this is Gale Force 9. It's really cool. And there we go. So... Let's pop out a battle wheel and have a look at one of those. So the battle wheels are quite quite large, and I want to pop one out just to give you an idea. We'll pump out, pop out Jason Momoa as well, because you know, why would you not? And in there, there we go. There we go. So it comes in two halves, and they connect together. So pop that in there. There we go. There's a battle wheel. So, the idea of the battle wheel, when it comes to, to fighting, and I, I, I haven't read the rules completely yet, I just know this from watching some of the games and thinking, I really want to play this game. If I have in, let's go for Calagro North again, if I have 10 troops there and I'm fighting, and then say my opponent brings 10 troops in, I, we then battle when it comes to the battle phase. I can say, right, I'm going to put my leader in, so he counts as three, and then I can spend up to ten troops here to fight, so I could go to 13. Then I'm going to say, right, I'm going to play a poison dart for a weapon, yeah, and I'm going to play a defensive card, because I don't want him to die, essentially. So that's my battle plan. We then simultaneously reveal them and we total up the amount. Unless, so for example, that would be 13. So I've got 13. Those 10 men would die regardless. So I've got 13 and I've used a poison dart. So all of that totals up. All these effects total up with each other to determine a winner of a fight. However, say for example, my opponent comes along and says, ha ha, traitor, Duncan Idaho. So he reveals that out of his hand, he automatically wins the fight because he's paid off Duncan Idaho. I mean, that card should go in the bin because no one pays off Jason Momo, whether they. There we go. So that's the contents of the game June. Very cool. I can't wait to play this game. Can't wait to get some recordings of it down and just to see me and my mates doing something different. Um, if you're new to the channel and this has attracted you in, you know, please do subscribe because we do play a wide variety of games. And we love to start with the board games, role-playing games are coming. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're one of our current viewers and this is interested, you let me know. If you're local to me, we'll have a game. But for now, stay safe, stay well. The spice must flow.